Hi guys, Samantha from Jason My Tutorials here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create Dragon's Vein Agate. So here are a few examples that I have. They're not the best ones. If I were you, I would Google it. There are much uh, better examples out there than these ones, but I thought I would show you anyway. And this is what we're going to try to be creating. We're not going to be uh, matching it exactly, but yeah. So I've got three rods of translucent here, and this is just translucent primo. And we're going to start off with this, and then we're going to work on the background. So we're first going to want a layer of white paint, and then afterwards I am going to be adding some colour. This step will be optional. But I have chosen yellow and red acrylic paint. But you can just stick with the white paint if you want to. I also have a bag here. This just makes it a lot easier to coat it and a lot less messy as well. So just squirt some paint in there. And then I'm just going to pop these in here. And it's a little hard to show on the camera because I've got limited room to move around in. those in. Make sure you have extra air in the bag. There we go. Just had to do it off camera. Basically what I do is I seal it partially and then I'll blow air through it just to make sure that it's nice and big. And then you can just shake it. And that will coat them well and it will save you from the majority of the mess. I'm going to take that out and I'm going to put them off to the side to dry and then we're going to put a second coat on. And as I said it will save you from the majority of the mess but you're still going to have a little bit. Also I would close this up because then you can use it again when we do the second layer and it should keep that paint wet so that you don't actually end up wasting as much. Okay, then while that's drying I'm going to start working on the background. And all you're going to need for that is a translucent rod and then two coloured translucent pieces. Now you can buy coloured translucent but in this case I don't have any in Primo and so I used alcohol ink to colour them and I just dropped uh, four drops of each colour. And these are the colours that I'm using. So this is Rust and this is Sunset Orange. You can use any colour you want though. But um, it does need to be coloured translucent because it needs to be translucent once baked. Then I'm just going to pop those rods together and we're just going to form a marble. So just press them together, like so. And this is just going to create a easy agate banded background. And just twist. And keep twisting until you get nice fine lines like so and you're going to find that this is going to get quite long and we'll be able to squish that back up um, I'll show you now actually how you do that we twist this end a little more and then all you do is you just press up against it you kind of grab it pinch it and then push it up like so and just keep repeating that process, twisting and pushing it back up a little bit because you don't want it to get too thin until you get to a point where you are happy with the banding. Okay, there we go. And then just flatten that out. Like so. And I just flatten it out with my hand first and then you can use your roller to do that. be fairly uh, simple to do. And now the background is not our focus, it's mostly going to be on the crackle so this background does not have to be very complicated because you will lose that uh, with the crackle that we're going to be doing later. So don't worry about getting a really complicated background. This one its own I would not be happy with because it doesn't look close enough to agate for my liking but um, putting more time into it is just going to get lost. One thing I will say is to just use your finger to bend out those lines a little bit so that they're a little less 
straight. That is something that you definitely can do that will make it look uh, significantly better and is quite simple and easy to do. Then just roll that back out with your roller and then we can move on to back onto our crackle because those pieces should have dried enough for us to start working with them. Okay. And they should not be completely dry but they'll be dry enough. Okay. Then I'm just going to bring that bag back over and you can see that it's kept the paint a little wet, not completely but enough that we can still use it. Okay, and I just had to uh, get that open up again and then I'm going to pop a little bit of yellow in and a little bit of red. Not a huge amount. And these are just the colours that I've chosen. And I am going to close that back up again and smudge those colours around a bit because I want them to mix with the white a bit. I don't want to immediately put my uh, clay in there and get them with like straight red and straight yellow. So you can just mix it around. And again, saves a lot of mess. There we go, that will be close enough and when we shake it up it will um, coat the pieces enough. Then yep, just shake it around like you did last time. Yep, and you can see it mixed up the colour. We've got our pieces in there. Just dump those out and let them dry. Okay, and here they are now that they are mostly dry. Now there might be a little of paint, a little bit of paint left when we roll them but they're pretty much done. So you're just going to pop them together and squish that and you're basically going to do um, something similar to what we did with the agate. You're not going to twist them but you will just piece them together and reduce it down. And we're going to reduce it down a few times because we need to cut it into pieces and squish them back together again so that we can create those cracks. Okay. And I'm just going to cut it into four. And you can see roughly what uh, that's going to look like it's going to stand out more once we've put it onto a backing. And just pop those pieces together and squish it back up and then uh, just form it into a rough square so that you can cut it out and piece them together because when you reduce it into a circle it's just a little bit harder to put them all together because uh, of the shape. Okay, and there we go. That should do. And I'm just going to cut it and see if I want to uh, reduce it down a little more. And yeah, those cracks are quite big. So I'm going to reduce this down, combine it, uh, cut it into four and combine it again and then we'll come back. Okay, there we go. Then let's cut that and see how it looks. And there we go, that's better. The um, pieces are much smaller. Okay, now I'm going to be making uh, two earring pairs. One I'm going to be putting on our agate piece as we made earlier. And then another one I'm going to be putting uh, these slices on a piece of black so that we can see how that looks. So let's just bring this over. And I don't want to use all of this. I'm just going to trim away the excess so that I don't end up wasting uh, some of this cane. There we go, and that should be enough for my purposes. Okay. Then we're going to slice pieces out of this and try to get them as thin as you can. The thinner, the better. So I've popped those all onto a piece of paper, off to the side, and 
and now we're going to layer them onto this and this is one of the few projects with a uh, cane where I actually do encourage you to overlap them a little bit rather than uh, piecing it all together perfectly um, just because uh, that does show up in the agate you can just piece them together like so and we are going to be sanding as well so just bear that in mind when you are layering them and just layer it across the whole piece and I'm going to do this with a sheet of black as well there we go then just going to take a piece of paper pop it on and bring up another one and we're going to burnish that thoroughly to get that all flattened out and I'll do that with my fingers first but you can also use your roller I would not advise putting it through a pasta machine because you will end up thinning it out and stretching the pattern and it doesn't actually get rid of the seams as much as I would like it to. So I will use the roller to burnish and roll it out slightly. There we go and I've got both, got both pieces now. Then I'm just going to be popping them into a mould and that will be pretty easy just going to cut off a piece so that it's a little more manageable and obviously I'll do this with the rest of it but I'm just going to be showing you with the one take that, put that um, vein side down and just press it in and actually I might mould that a little bit myself because the translucent I'm working with is a little bit um, on the hard side so, as you can see there when I pressed it, it didn't mould as well as I would like, so I'll actually manipulate this into a little bit of an easier shape for it to take. And that is perfectly fine, manipulating that around will work. And I'll just insert that. The important thing is to just make sure that you haven't missed any edges so that the orange bit is showing up. That's the only thing that you need to watch for. Okay. And some slight cracks are okay because we will be able to press that out. And if your clay is a bit softer you can just press it straight into the mould. You don't have to worry about those. Uh, but the, as I said the translucent I'm working with is a bit on the hard side. And just use your roller to really press that into the mould and that's why some uh, smaller cracks are not a problem because this should smooth it out. Okay, and you can see from the back how that looks. Okay. That looks uh, pretty good. And just trim away the extra clay. I'm using a dull blade here so that I don't end up hurting myself. I would not advise using a super sharp blade, both because it can slip and it's very hard doing it this way, and also because you don't want to accidentally cut your mould, so it's for both of those reasons. And I'll just use this to smooth out the back. And then we should be able to pop that out. If it's not popping out nicely and is distorting, put it in the freezer for a little while and it'll come out nicely. You can see there how pretty that looks. Just gently tap down the sides so that you get rid of any fluff. We do still need to sand this after it's finished uh, but that looks quite nice. I'm going to make another one of this and then I'm also going to make two of the black. And then you're going to bake that for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature and then we'll finish off. Okay, and here they are out of the oven. Now I have sanded them and here's a comparison once they are buffed and you can see that that really brings out the colours quite a bit. And so we are going to buff these two 
and I've just sanded them from a 400 grit all the way up to a 1200 and they should have a nice smooth finish to them. I'm going to be using some renaissance wax just to bring up the shine of it. Now these ones uh, can be used to make earrings but I've decided that I'm not going to drill them or turn them into earrings in that way because I actually want to use them as cabochons in later projects and if I drill them I won't be able to do that. So I'm just saying that ahead of time. Because it's nice to make cabochons ahead of time and then use them in projects because it can take a little while to make these. And so doing it all at once can be a bit much. But there we are. Put the renaissance wax on. And then you can either buff those using a rag or you can use a rotary tool. I'm using a Dremel. And this makes a little bit of noise so maybe turn down the sound a little bit if you're using headphones. And I'm nowhere near done, but I just want to show you how that has really buffed it up. So continue doing that with both of them. And then you want to let it dry for about an hour before you, if you were going to drill them, because you'll end up getting fingerprints on the wax. Okay, and there they are. So you can see how nicely um, the shine comes out once you've buffed them. And yeah, that is basically it for the tutorial. I'm not sure if the camera is able to pick it up, but these have a really interesting shine to them and there's quite a bit of depth. I don't think that the camera is going to be able to pick that up, but they really look quite nice. Now keep in mind that you can create different colours. I went for a more um, density Theme. but as you can see with the other dragon vein agate you can really go quite crazy with the colors the technique I showed here is more like this where you've got a solid color background with the cracks this one you're gonna have to be a little more specific with the banding and get the translucent slices quite a bit thinner to be able to do that uh, but yeah I hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you did please let me know in the comments below and Please leave a like on the video as that is really helpful and greatly appreciated. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.